So recently I was scrolling through Instagram and I came across an account called Cheap Old Houses. And yes, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's an account that posts cheap old houses that are for sale all over the country. It's really cool and just like everything on Instagram, it's really addicting. But while I was scrolling through, I thought to myself, okay, there's no way anyone actually buys these houses, right? There's gotta be a reason they're so cheap. Wrong. People do buy these houses and I was able to find someone that bought one of these houses. This is Betsy Sweeney and she just bought a cheap old house. So I messaged her and asked if I could come see her house and I thought she would think I was totally crazy and not respond, but to my surprise, she said yes. And that's how I found myself on a plane ride over to Wheeling, West Virginia to check out this cheap old house. If you were to drive just an hour southwest of Pittsburgh, you would find yourself in the city of Wheeling. Hi, I'm Betsy Sweeney and I bought a house for $18,500 in Wheeling, West Virginia. Here it is, folks, the $18,000 house. For that price tag, Betsy got a 4,000 square foot Victorian style home that features four bedrooms, a tiny house, and a very spacious lot. But before we head inside, let's talk about why it's so cheap. The city of Wheeling was established in the early 1800s and it was quickly considered the gateway to the west. With it being situated on the Ohio River, steamboats made it extremely accessible to import and export goods. It really began expanding though in the industrial era and factories started popping up for everything from glass production to steel, iron, nails, even these pretty tin ceilings that you see, Wheeling was the biggest producer for those. People were becoming really wealthy from it and as a result, grand buildings were constructed all around the town. It was very trendy then to show off your wealth with a big building. Eventually that gold rush came to an end and the Great Depression hit. With that job started going overseas and these factories became obsolete. The population has been in decline ever since. Therefore, we have this cute little city with many beautiful buildings that are extremely cheap and vacant. Like many industrial cities, Wheeling has never fully recovered from that downturn. But now with such a rich architectural heritage and cheap cost of living, this younger generation of people like Betsy are moving to Wheeling and working to revive the community. So if you enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel and also please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the video's performance with YouTube and maybe share it with a friend. So let's go check out her house. This is my favorite part of the house. This like stair hall, which nobody really has anymore. Back when this house was built in 1892, this would have been a really public space. It's where you really like wanted to show off. So that's why the staircase is the most kind of elaborate part of the house. And then I love this fireplace. This is the, one of the reasons I bought the house. I own rescue dogs. I've researched dogs in my professional career. And so seeing this tile vignette was really special and really sold me on it. So how much cash did you end up putting down? I put 18.5 down in cash. Okay. And then my third party loan of 25 was my down payment for my construction loan. My renovation costs are expected to clock in right around $125,000. I would say that's pretty in line with what you can expect with a house of this scale in Wheeling. Betsy will be serving as her own contractor designer and doing a lot of the heavy lifting herself. The city of Wheeling also gives a 20% tax credit for restoring an old home, so she's taking advantage of that as well. But this will be the living room. It's actually kind of interesting when I think about the faraway goal of decorating. It's not actually a huge room. As massive as the house is, I'm not putting a huge sectional in here. It's kind oh. of hard to furnish, so I don't know what I'm gonna do. I think maybe just like a cozy sofa here. I see a huge Christmas tree here at the holidays. <laughs> exciting about this room is that my pocket doors work which usually they're trapped in the wall or broken and these work they both close this is the dining room so again I have another pocket door that works I love this fireplace and these stained glass windows are not original to the house in like the 1920s um, a Presbyterian church owned my home so they salvaged those windows and had them installed 
This area, there used to be a stair, so when we go upstairs, it'll make more sense, but there would have been a secondary service stair that came out right here. At some point in the 20th century, that was taken out, and they put this little half bath in here. But I love it. It's a great size. It's super practical. I love this sink. And this will have like crazy wallpaper and just be like a very cool room. And then this is my kitchen. This corner of the house was like collapsing. <laughs> so all of that was reinforced and then this floor was laid down. And so I think the plan in here is cut in, starting here, the whole way up, all the way here, the whole way back to create one straight wall to hang a pan like a full set of pantry cabinets on. Range here, refrigerator here, weird corner I still have to figure out is like here. <laughs> it's a challenge and it might change because it's an old house and they didn't they didn't have kitchens like we have now. This pressed metal would have been more than likely manufactured in Wheeling, just like down the street. All of this will eventually come down, get cleaned, get repaired, go back up and be painted. It's gonna be probably the worst part of this whole process. And then we'll go into what will be the master. This is actually one of the rooms that needs the most work. This scaffold, somebody will be standing in here, like in between the floor joists, fixing things up in there. I definitely get some second looks, especially when I meet contractors for the first time. They come in and they really haven't seen this house, and then they certainly haven't seen me, and they walk in and they see this like young woman with a house that looks like it's falling down and they think, are you cracked, lady? <laughs> and I'm not, this is my job. This is what anyone that's worked with me will tell you that this house is in the best hands it possibly could be. Um, this was a doorway. This was probably actually a sitting room originally for the main bedroom back there. I'm gonna make this wall in just like two rooms. And then this will be my office. So I don't know if I'm gonna put a wall or a door here or part of me sees like big velvet curtains or something. Um, to make it pretty. That's part of my fireplace for my bedroom. Oh, and this is the um, service stair, or what's left of it. So you originally would have come all the way down and ended up in the hall and exited or whatever, but now this is the ceiling of that half bath. I am a big meditator, a big reader, so this whole little space is just gonna be like my little nook. I'm weirdly into this room too, even though it is just a guest bedroom and honestly probably shouldn't be as big of a priority as it is for me, but I think it's a really pretty room. It's a large room and it looks out into the backyard, which I really like. So like when my parents, I didn't tell them I didn't tell them I was buying this until I was under contract, oh. and I didn't let them see it until it was too late. <laughs> I expected when I came into this house, you were gonna be incurring costs such as, you know, floors falling through. Mm -hmm. Does that happen for other people that buy cheap homes like this, or? It really runs the gamut. Mm -hmm. Like, I have some structural issues, but mine are more related to exterior things because I don't have gutters and there's like water running down the side of my building. Mm -hmm but I have a good roof. If I had gutters, but a hole in my roof, you might have a hole in your floor. So it's really like where the water goes, the problems follow. And this house did have some big structural issues in the basement and it still does have some, but for the most part, like structural in that it needs to be repaired before I live in it, yes. Not so bad that the house is gonna fall down though. And a lot of that is just the quality of materials used. So it's impossible to get wood framing members that are as strong as these trees were. Was there anything unexpected that's happened since buying this house? Um, my dad and I were downstairs in the half bath, like doing some wiring and we heard a crash. And so we went into the living room where we kind of heard it and like some drywall fell or something. And we are like, no, it was, it was heavier. Like what, what was that? So we went upstairs and like seven or eight bricks from that corner had just fallen <laughs> into the floor. This project is expected to take about a year's time with six months of construction and another six months of finish work. Betsy's hoping to be in the house by the new year and entertaining by next summer. The bathroom, someone got a little bit into a modern bathroom update in here. This will be a big walk-in shower. This is all original. 
So this will just get stripped and painted. This will be white tile, white hex on the ground, probably some cabinetry or something to like hold towels and stuff. Okay. But this is one of the closer rooms to being finished. This is fitted for a washer dryer, cabinetry above, a closet here, maybe a mirror there, and then there's gonna be another closet here, because it's already naturally cut in, because again, this is where they borrowed for the bathroom. Shoe closet in here, um, and this will function like a master closet laundry room. Historically, that's up here is where they would have put the kids and the maid. And there's this giant room here. All this has been ripped out because I'm getting new gutters. Who knows, if I'm here for two years, it'll probably be, just be storage. If I'm here for 10 years, maybe we need a kid's room. <laughs> I really love this view because you can see the dome of the cathedral and a lot of the rooftops of downtown and little like vignettes of the neighborhood. This is where all the different roof lines of the house kind of meet. So you get all these different angles. I honestly was gonna use this as like a utility room, but it's my boyfriend's favorite room in the house. No way. Yeah, yeah he loves this it. This room of all the rooms. I know. And there's a ton of wallpaper up here too. Oh my God. I was noticing. I think this probably would have been a maid's room. I totally see two twin beds here. I just really like this little room for some reason. So that's the house? That's then? the house. And then there's a mini house in the back. Oh yeah, let's go to the mini house. The mini house is super cool and actually the previous owners lived in it. This will be fenced and then that side lot is mine as well. Really? So, yeah. You could like build another house? I could. I'm not going to, but I right. totally could. Everything that was in the basement of this house, which is a lot of stuff, is here. It was, if you can kind of imagine. This space back here was like a dry sink kitchen. And then in here they had, previous owners had a little camp toilet. This was their living space. And then up here, there's steps to a loft. So this building was actually a shed, like behind a fancy house in South Wheeling, another neighborhood. And the previous owners salvaged it, took it all apart, brought it here. All of it is just like bits and pieces of houses that have been saved from the dumpster, essentially. I'm like honestly in shock right now because <laughs> this right here, even this, like I would pay $18,000 just for this. Yeah. Just for this, it's like essentially a tiny house. It totally is a tiny house. It could be anything. I could run a business out of here. I could make it a she shed. I could make it a guest house. It it's already has electricity. It's insulated. It's warm. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. And this whole space, there'll be a fence back there. There'll be a fence here. I don't know if I'm gonna make this grass or beds or patio or what. This will be a retaining wall. And then this will be a privacy fence and then the street facing side will be a brick wall and then it'll also create like a little secret garden vibe back here. So you work with old houses for a living. When did you realize, okay, I want to own my own old house one day? Probably when I was like four. Okay. <laughs> I've always dreamt of it and it was when I decided to move to Wheeling that I saw the quality of life and the cost of living that I could have here would really allow me to do the extreme end of what my kind of goals and dreams were and buy something like this. I can't afford to do this in DC or Brooklyn or like, I'm not a millionaire, so. In Wheeling, yeah, I can have a Juliet balcony off my attic. <laughs> West Virginia is a scrappy little state and Wheeling is a scrappy little city and when people come in and embrace it, they are happy to have you. To be honest, I was not expecting much out of Wheeling, West Virginia, but it did surprise me. It seems like an ideal place to live. With a beautiful waterfront and mountains, it's just an hour outside of a big city and international airport. With nice people, a low cost of living, it's no wonder she moved here. What do you think it'll take to, you know, keep growing as a city? Wheeling is definitely on the cusp of revitalization, and while we feel like we're doing a lot to kind of make it up that hill, it's a slippery slope, so we have to have more people that want to be entrepreneurs and want to kind of take the risk and maybe start a business or buy a building or open a storefront. Getting more young people here that maybe are 
you know, working from home indefinitely or just kind of rethinking what workplace or home looks for them. I think this is a great place to move to and try. Thank you guys for watching this video. I truly hope you enjoyed. Like I said, if this is content that you like, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and share it with a friend. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Welcome to my latest life crisis. I know your first question is why? Why did you buy this?